Kane Womack, head coach of South Alabama. Congrats on the win. If we told anybody that this game would be dominated by one team, they probably would have guessed it'd be the, the Power 5 school with a lot of success recently. Yeah. How did your team do this tonight? If you would ask in our locker room, everybody would have said that this is a team that if we go do our job, we're capable of a whole heck of a lot and very proud of our players. Our fans are behind us. Our administration's unbelievable. The city of Mobile's behind us. We're all pulling the rope in the same direction. And there are some unbelievable things that are going on in Mobile right now. I, I gotta tell you this, if you're, if you're a student looking in the class of 24 where to go to school, get on Google search and take a look at Mobile, Alabama. What we're doing at University of South Alabama, our best days are ahead of us. Oh! It's Coach P, a.k.a. Goat Door, the unofficial assistant coaches. I'm back at you with more news coming out of T-Town 205, Title Town, Alabama. It seems as if Coach Kalen DeBoer has found his man, his defensive coordinator. Kane Womack. Head coach out of South Alabama. That's right, head coach. We didn't go to South Alabama and get a defensive coordinator and bring him up here. We brought the head coach. We also brought in another winner that's familiar with the winner we got at head coach. Y'all know Coach P ain't trying to come in here and sound like everybody else. Let's go deeper into his past. Let's dig into it. Let's start at 2014 when he really get his first break in the coach. Eastern Illinois defensive coordinator. Entering East Illinois with a new head coach. This will be his first year as defensive coordinator. First year they go five and seven. Second year they turn it around and go seven and five. Womack defense was second in the OVC. That's the Ohio Valley Conference. Not to be confused with OVO. Second in scoring. Fourth in takeaways. Gotta love the TOs. And I ain't talking to Rail Owens. He also had four defensive players to earn all OVC honors. That second year in 2015, he helped the Panthers reach the first round of the FCS playoffs, a top 25 final ranking, produced the co-defensive player of the year for the Ohio Valley Conference, as well as a college football performance awards FCS defensive tackle of the year, and a first team All-American by the American Football Coaches Association. In 2015, his second year as a DC, second nationally in interceptions, third in takeaways, fourth in pass defense, Efficiency defense, 10th in tackle for loss. They led the OVC in pass efficiency defense, red zone defense, second in scoring D, second in passing defense, second in third down defense, second in first down defense, and second in sack. Under his reign, one of his DBs received first team OVC honors each year. Let's not forget that's Eastern Illinois in the years of 2014 and 2015. From there, we move on up to South Alabama as defensive coordinator. Let's look at their record in the previous years. 2012, 2 and 11. 2013, 6-6. and six. 2014, 6-7. and seven. 2015, before his arrival, 5-7. Though the record didn't get much better in his two years there, it wasn't his team. He was not the head coach nor offensive coordinator. He was the defensive coordinator. And with that being said, let's look at what he brought to the table for what he was paid to do. I read and I quote, During Womack's two seasons in Mobile, Alabama, South Alabama was the 13th most improved scoring defense and rush defense in the nation. He engineered one of the top turnarounds in the country. The unit was the fifth most improved nationally in scoring defense and ranked in the top 10 nationally in passing defense. The Jaguars finished in the top five in the Sun Belt Conference in pass defense, pass efficiency defense, tackles for loss and third down conversion percentage against. University of South Alabama was one of only two programs with multiple first team all conference honorees. So it's safe to say in those two years he did his job and that was at South Alabama for two years as defensive coordinator. From there he moves on up to Indiana as the linebackers coach where he relinks with Tom Allen. Tom Allen he originally met in 2012 at Ole Miss on the new staff being put together by Hugh Free. Tom Allen was the special teams coordinator and the linebackers coach. Fast forward from 2012 to 2018, Tom Allen brings in Womack to be linebacker coach at Indiana. He eventually moves out the way and let Womack take over the defense coordinator position going into the next year with guess who? Starting the 2019 Indiana season, head coach Tom Allen, third season. First season, defense coordinator, Kane Womack. First season, offense coordinator, guess who? Kalen DeBoer, a.k.a. KD. A.K.A. Debo! 
They took a 5-7 and seven Indiana team to 8-5 and five in their first year together. Indiana hadn't won eight games since 1993. I knew this was a basketball school, but hold up. I was watching Jordan kick butt in 93. A lot of y'all probably weren't even born. Debo stayed for one year. Kane will stay for yet another year, which will make his third. Second as defensive coordinator. That second year, he was defensive coordinator, which was the COVID year. They went 6-2. and two. Indiana finished 13th in the coaches poll and 12th in the AP. You talking about a team that ain't had an eight-win season since 1993. That's almost championship status in Indiana. Especially when we talking football. A top 15 finish? How? When you make programs do what they ain't did in over 25 years, it's time for you to go, son. Back to South Alabama you go this time as head coach. And guess who this man got as the offensive coordinator? None other than Nick Saban first coordinator at Alabama. Major Applewhite. <laughs> I can't make this up. Well, their first year together, they go five and seven. Their second year in 2022, 10 and three. Seven and one in the conference. Sunbelt West Division champion. 2023, a drop off in the record, but a huge win in the form of Oklahoma State. The defense name noticeable in almost all the defensive stats around the board. Total defense, 15th. Tackles for loss, 25th. Passes intercepted, 25th. Passing yards allowed, 28th. Red zone defense, 23rd. Rushing defense, 19th. Third down conversion percentage defense, 27th. Fourth down conversion percentage defense, 13th. Scoring defense, 28th. First down defense, 10th. We talking about 130 schools. This man top 30 in about every category. Even in total defense, they 15th, Alabama 18th. This man ain't been there four years. I can only imagine what you can do with the talent we have at Alabama. And like I say, we didn't go to South Alabama and get a defensive coordinator. We went and got a head coach with a background of being a DC. Like I said with Lane, Lane cool as a head coach, but if I could personally hire Lane, I would hire him as an OC. My man Womack doing his thing as a head coach, but in T-Town, all he has to worry about is being the best DC he can be, and that's go bring trouble for opposing teams. Sometimes when you got a coach this promising, you just want to put him at head coach to change the program. This man will, again, be a head coach. But this new coaching tree we're forming in Tuscaloosa, which will allow him to just sit down and concentrate on one thing as of now, I don't think you guys understand what you're seeing. Voltron is forming in Tuscaloosa. What Debo lacks in recruiting in the South, we pick up right here with this hire. I hate to keep reminding you haters that Nick Saban is still in the building. Let's not worry about recruiting that much. In this home that Nick built, he is making sure the foundation is strong and firm. So like a comment that stood out in my comment section, which reminded me, I wouldn't be surprised if Nick Saban still popped up in a recruit's living room. You never know. We finna do what it takes to make sure this engine keep running. This is one of the most promising upcoming coaches available. And I don't think he's too big to where he's at a level where he's not willing to listen. You take this man principles, you cross that with Nick Saban, a few meetings here, a few text messages there, a few conference calls here. This man finna be the biggest name in football when it comes to defense in a few years. Kirby can just go and get out the way. Nick Saban doesn't have to coach against any of these coaches anymore. Now we finna see Coach Saban debrief and give all these coaches the information needed to keep this program on top. This is another coaching son that knows football. We basically have head coaches all over the staff now. Saban is ready to debrief and unload everything he knows. He know he don't have to coach against these guys no more. He can give it all up now. And you know who's going to receive it? The guys he's leaving to carry on his legacy. Another reason I'm loving the Kane Womack how he's not too big to listen. He a player's coach, and he's head coaches all around the room. This is the new power tree of college football. And when I speak of that room full of head coaches, let's not forget about the retired head coach that's still in the building. People trying to make Bama fans panic by just keep throwing the fact that Saban retired in their face, but fail to realize. That man the GOAT for a reason. The new power tree is formed. Once these recruits realize what's going on, they'll feel good as I do. Make sure you join patreon.com slash coach John Doe for the number one content when it comes to Alabama football. It's Coach P, a.k.a. GOAT Doe, the unofficial assistant. See you next time.